Good afternoon, dear Eleanor and Elizabeth, and welcome. Bless both your hearts and know we love you. And welcome to Sister Sue who's joined us and to those not logged in, you are more than welcome. And first, my apologies for missing last night. I guess tiredness overcame me after a rather busy day here preparing for the Feast of St. David, Dawi San, and our interfaith peace service. But I'm here and I'm with friends who support me greatly on my faith journey. And I offered this vigil for you to say thank you. Thank you. We begin our 13th session of our retreat by first lighting this candle to thank Almighty God for giving to us their precious Son, Jesus. And I know that those of us who are here who've logged in, we are already brides of Jesus because we've dedicated our lives to him for peace and for unity. So this is for you to say thank you, God, for your commitment to. So let us now be still as we come into the presence of love. And as we take a deep breath, we breathe in and we say, I calm my body. And as we breathe out, we smile. And now we dwell in the present moment. I know this is a wonderful moment for all of us here because Jesus is present. The beloved is present. So we say, welcome Lord to our humble effort to raise awareness of your love for us. And we begin by sharing a reflection from Father Baron, and he talks about encountering God on the mountain. The transfiguration was obviously of great importance for the first Christians. We've been talking about how the early church related it to the Akida. So let's take, take a deeper look at its biblical framework. The transfiguration takes place on a mountain and this right away places it in relation to the Old Testament. Abraham is willing to sacrifice his son on a mountain. Noah's Ark comes to rest on a mountain, Mount Ararat. The law is given to Moses on Mount Sinai. Elijah challenges the priests of Baal on Mount Carmel. Jerusalem is built on the top of Mount Zion. Mountains are places of encounter with God, and we are blessed here to have the Cumbrian Hills and the Pennine Way surrounding this ancient Celtic kingdom of Reged. In the New Testament, Jesus gives the law on the mountain, the Sermon on the Mount. He dies on Mount Calvary, and in a climactic moment in his public life, he brings three of his disciples to the top of a mountain, and there he is transfigured before them. What is especially stressed here is the manner in which Jesus represents the fulfillment of the Old Testament revelation, economically symbolized by the two figures with whom he converses, Moses representing the law and Elijah representing the prophets. When a Jew of Jesus' time would speak of the scriptures, he would use a shorthand, the law of the prophets. In speaking of Moses and Elijah, in the glory of the transfiguration, Jesus signals 
that he brings the law and the prophets to their proper fulfillment. N.T. Wright, the great contemporary biblical scholar, says that the Old Testament remained fundamentally a story without an ending, a promise without fulfillment, that is, until Jesus came into history. Our second reflection comes from the Little Book of Lent, and this evening the Right Reverend Simon Barrington Ward, who was General Secretary of the Church Mission Society from 1975 to 85, when he became Bishop of Coventry, and he shares this, Real Presence, Eucharist in South America. He passed a slightly large hut nearer the road outside which a lively group of men and youngsters seemed to be putting together a small car from a variety of old parts. He stopped to talk to them and soon they were plying him with questions. He told them that he was there for a Christian conference. They were quite excited. It turned out that they were all members of a house church that met just there, which was going to make use of this car they were making. One of the men was a pastor and he invited my friend in for the communion service. He crossed the planks with them and they gathered in one half of the hut. Through the sacking curtain that hid the rest, little faces peeped at the stranger. The pastor put on a rough white cloth cut like a poncho and stood behind a table with the rest gathered round. Then he prayed wonderfully and the others joined in with petitions, praying for my friend's family at home as well. And they sang, accompanied by two guitars and some pipes. They all embraced my friend as they shared the peace. And when it came to the great thanksgiving prayer, all spoke responses and the pastor improvised a rejoicing prayer over the bread and the wine. It seemed to my friend that the roof opened up and all heaven surrounded them. They glimpsed themselves as part of a society where one day all the peoples of the earth would care for each other all the good things of the world would be shared, where everyone would have their part to play and their contribution to make, and all would have enough to eat. In the confession, all had spoken freely and some wept. Now forgiveness prevailed. All sang and shouted alleluias. The bread and wine were shared and the blessing given. They then escorted my friend back to the near hotel. He felt as if he'd never understood the Eucharist or communion or the Lord's Supper so well. Now he sat, sorry, now he saw that once again Christ was the bridge between heaven and now. He puts his arms around us to take us into the final banquet where all will have their honoured place. By his grace he heals and cleanses us to strengthen us with this food. And so we turn, and so we in turn can become the bridge for those around us to a more abundant life, going out to put relationships right, to love and to serve one another as we have done at the feast, full of happiness, that we are on our way. What a beautiful reflection. And the scripture reading that he offers us for this day is Romans 12 verses 1 to 21. That's Romans chapter 12, 1 to 21. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds. And he shares a prayer Lord, in this sacrament of bread and wine, you are present with us. 
You give us your life. You share your love with us. Come to us. Abide with us that we may reveal your presence, your life, your love, and go with joy along our way. A lovely prayer. But St. Francis has this to say, don't compare, don't judge. In Luke chapter 6, verses 37 to 38, we read, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Those words are so poignant today because so many Christians judge one another. And it's such a shame. Jesus reserved his harshest words in the Gospels for those who thought they were spiritually superior to others. Francis, too, recognized that this failing threatened those who had given up everything to follow him in his gospel commitment to a life of poverty, prayer, and penance. He emphasized to his followers that they were to examine their own lives rather than pointing fingers at others. He said in his Rule of 1223, I warn all the friars and exhort them not to condemn or look down on people whom they see wearing soft or gaudy clothes and enjoying luxuries in food or drink. Each one should rather condemn and despise himself. We will always encounter people who are better than we are and worse than we are on nearly every human social and spiritual level. If we begin making comparisons, soon and very soon, we will be making judgments. Judgments about them and judgments about ourselves. In doing so, we quickly lose sight of who we are, unique individuals created and loved by God for ourselves, not on some cosmic grading curve. And he shares with us a prayer to St. Francis, where there is poverty and joy, there is neither cupidity nor avarice, where there is peace and contemplation, there is neither care nor restlessness. Amen. So let us stay with that. And let us, in the short time we have together, to come as brothers and sisters who are loved. My, my heart is guiding me to invite you to come and join me on a mountain, a special mountain here in Cumbria, at Keswick, where the standing stones are. I know that dear Eleanor and Elizabeth accompanied Brother Rob and myself to these standing stones when they were here last year. And the view is spectacular of the valleys below. So come with me now. Let us come to this sacred site that goes back billions of years, where indigenous peoples live and who worshipped the light. And as we come from this narrow road that climbs up this steep hillock, we come and we find a gate. We go through that gate and there's a slight incline 
and there before us we see innumerable standing stones in a sacred circle. And we decided to follow our heart and to walk around touching each stone. There are about 30 odd stones there, but we stop at each one, we touch it and we bless it. And as we go around the circle of stones, we come into the center where there is a stone that looks like an altar. And we touch this stone with our hands. And we lift up our head as we look up to the heavens and there we see Brother Sun sharing his radiant light on us as we stand by the sacred stone. And our feet are being re-energized by the healing energies of Mother Earth. She's releasing love from the sacred earth up through our feet. And that healing energy is balancing and restoring each of our chakras or energy wheels. And her love is now flowing right up into our heart. And as we look up, we see the clouds dissipate and we see the most beautiful vision of Jesus coming down from heaven with angels singing the great Alleluia and he comes and he stands on the stone and his love pierces our hearts. And on this stone stands Jesus, the transfigured one. And he calls us to witness this. He calls us by name to be partakers of his life and his love. And around him, are a choir of angels singing the praises of God. And as we look further up, we see Mother Mary on her throne of light with Kuan Yin and Magdalena, with the apostles and prophets, with Francis and Claire. And it is a wonderful feeling And as we look at Jesus, we are in absolute awe of his love for us. He looks at us and he looks at you and his eyes are piercing blue, piercing you with unconditional love. And your heart is imploding with the love of Mother Earth and the love of Jesus flowing through every part of you, every part that is not in alignment with God's will. Every aching muscle and bone is now being re-energized by his love. And he invites you to be still. He invites you to just receive his love.
and as you stand by the sacred stone with both hands touching the sacred monoliths where Jesus is now transfigured before you. He directs a question to you. Do you love me? Do you really love me? And he assures us that he does not send us crosses to destroy us. He sends us blips, tests and trials that really are blessings from his heart to help us grow and to help us lean on him and he asks us to be true to him by telling him exactly how we feel. And if we feel that the burdens are too great, he asks us to ask him for that strength not to allow the evil one spoil a beautiful friendship born in love. And Jesus speaks to you words you've heard before. I came that you may have life and have it to the full. I came that you may have life and have it to the full. Receive my love and let my love now touch you and fill you with my peace. For I came to give you peace this night. I came that you will shoulder your burdens onto me and let me care for you. Receive my love. Relax in my love. And as he lifts his hands towards you, you see rays of light flowing from his hands to your heart. He's transfiguring you now. He is anointing you with his healing light and his love. And every part of you now is being transfused by the love of God. Every part of you, and especially those parts that are in pain. And with each in breath, we breathe in His love for us, and in our out breath, we say, Thank you, Lord, for your blessing right now. And those rays of love will replenish you in your mind, in your body and spirit and fill you with the peace and love of the Beloved. He's now inviting us to bless every situation in our life, every disappointment, every setback, every hurt, every ache and every pain. He's inviting us to bless it and now release it to his love. To release it to his love. His peace comes upon us. His peace 
saturates every part of us, leaving us grounded, protected, and aware that we are not alone, that we are loved, and that nothing will separate us from this beautiful love. So let us now relax in that love as we allow him to transfigure us with him on this sacred mountain. And the angels are rejoicing for us, for you because you are here and the Lord, the Lord God is revealing his heart to you, not to lose heart, but to remain steadfast in his love and to call on him each second of every moment of each hour of every day and trust in him and trust in his love. And as we open our eyes, we see the Lord ascending into heaven and the clouds close like a curtain, but the rays of brother sun pierce those clouds and leave us in a place of tranquility and peace. And as we gather our thoughts and our reflections, we thank the sacred stones of this circle for the love and the energy they bring. And reverently we bow to them, thanking Almighty God and Mother Earth for their gifts to us. And now we gently leave the Cathedral of Light and as we leave the gate behind us, we come back to where we are and we say, Come Holy Spirit of God, fill us with life anew that we might love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on us, O breath of God, and fill us with life anew. Breathe on Eleanor, O breath of God, and fill her with life anew that she might love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on Elizabeth, O breath of God, and fill her with life anew, that she might love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on Sue, O breath of God, and fill her with life anew, that she might love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on all here present, O breath of God, and fill us with life anew, that we might love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Relax now, relax and know that we are loved. Thank you for joining me. May God reward you with God's inner peace and healing until we meet again. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, paxet bonum, om shanti, solo di carita, salam alaikum, and may the peace of the transfigured Jesus transfigure you and allow you experience his intimate touch 
of healing and wellness. Amen.